This video is a quick introduction to C that assumes you've seen some other programming language before. The goal is a high-level overview of the structure of C code. The roots of C are important to understanding why C was designed the way it was. So a little context. C grew out of some events in the 60s and early 70s. In 1969, the first attempt was made to build an operating system in a high-level language instead of in assembly language. But that didn't pan out. It was too slow to be useful. Then, Ken Thomas and Dennis Ritchie were working on simulating the movement of bodies in space with graphics. In order for that to run on the equipment of that time period, they needed a much lighter weight operating system than what they had. They wanted to build it in a high-level language, but they knew about the trouble that Maltics had. So they simplified an existing interpreter to create the language B. But that still wasn't fast enough. Interpreting the language was too slow, so they needed a compiled language. The result was C. But the point of this is to remember the motivation behind developing C. They were using it to write code that is an operating system. That means two critical things drove the design of the language. First, it's an operating system. It needs direct access to the hardware. So C has ways to directly change the memory. Second, when something goes wrong in an operating system, there's no one there to help. You can't ask the user for help. So C trusts the programmer to know everything. And when things go wrong, it just crashes. There's no graceful error handling. In order to be that trustworthy C programmer, we're going to have to learn more about how the machine really works. And we're going to have to learn how to debug our code when the only feedback from the system is, oops, I crashed. Here is our first C program. The colors are generated by C Lion and give us a clue about what the things are. Orange is keywords, green is strings, and blue are constants. There are more colors for the other language constructs that we'll see soon. The first line of our code is an include statement. We read the octothorpe as pound, not hashtag. The pound sign tells us that this line is an instruction to the compiler. Pound include means go get another file and insert it here. Standardio.h is a file that gives us the normal input and output operations. For this program, we're using printf to output information but we'll talk about that more when we get there. In C, the code that gets run is always in the main function. So the int main labels the code we want to run and the curly brackets show where it begins and ends. When we want to store something, we use a variable. Every variable has three things, a name, a place in memory of the machine, and a value stored in that place in memory. In order for the compiler to know how much space a variable requires, we have to tell it what information that variable will hold. This is called declaring the variable. Every declaration requires two things, the type of information and the name of the variable. So in these declarations, int means integer and double means a real number. So number of bottles is a variable that will hold an integer and total cost is a variable that will hold a real number. The syntax of a declaration is always type and then name. We store information into a variable using an assignment statement. We read this first one as number of bottles gets the value eight. Assignment statements always have of the variable on the left-hand side and the value we want to put into it on the right-hand side. The reason we read the equal sign as gets the value is because we want to express the idea that the statement encodes an action storing the information, not a comparison between the variable and the value. The first of these assignment statements stores an eight into the variable named number of bottles. The second one has a little more magic. The assignment statements always evaluate the right-hand side and store the result in the variable on the left-hand side. So it starts by evaluating 
number of bottles, asterisk, 1.29. That asterisk is the multiplication operator. So it will multiply the 8 in number of bottles by 1.29, resulting in 10.32. That's the value that will be stored into the total cost variable. Printf is a function from the standard I.O. library that we included at the top of the file. We use it to output strings to the screen. The first argument to printf is a format string, which specifies what the output will look like. In this case, the percent %f in that string says that we want to output a real number. f is for floating point, which is the technical term for a real number. The rest of the arguments to printf are the variables whose values should be put into the format string structure. In this case, total cost will be formatted as a real number. We'll learn a lot more about format strings and printf in the coming videos. We'll learn more about the return statement later. For now, we need it to end our main function. When I run this code in C Lion, this is the output I get. The first line says what is running. You can ignore the details there. The second line shows the result of our printf statement. And the third line shows that our main function returned to zero. For the main function, returning zero means everything went OK. So that's a first pass at the structure of C code through an example. The next video will add some detail to this example to show a bit more. From there, we'll dive into how you do bigger things in C.